Hello and welcome to another episode of Finally Following God's Laws, uh, 613 Laws of God. Is it possible to keep them or too heavy a burden or yoke? Uh, once again, my name is David and I've been going through these laws one at a time, actually 10 at a time, sometimes less than that as we've been going through. In my last video, we had six, okay, of God's dietary laws, all right? So uh, this one's going to have seven, okay? And uh, you might be saying, once again, if, if you're just watching this video, okay, this, this video for the first time, okay, and you're barely watching it, well, you got to go back, okay? Especially my last video that I made, you got to go back and check it out and actually just go back to video number one. You know, don't dismiss it because within these videos, I present the case of God's laws, his uh, statutes, his ordinances, his holy days have not been abolished. I've been taking you through scripture after scripture after scripture, uh, uh, proving, okay, proving that his laws were not abolished. They did not, uh, they were not done away with. Um, I got one coming up uh, from the book of Hebrews uh, saying that his laws are obsolete now. Um, I'm going to bring you that next time, okay? I didn't get it ready for you today, but I will bring it to you on the next video. As far as in the book of Hebrews, it says that his laws were um, made obsolete, that the law of the, the Mosaic laws have been made obsolete. Well, there's uh, there's further, uh, actually further study, okay, uh, that some words had been taken out in that scripture and uh, not added, but taken out, which just changes everything. I'll just briefly tell you, okay, it was the priesthood, okay? It was the priesthood in the book of Hebrews that, that, that the writer of Hebrews was talking about, that the priesthood and actually the, the, the Israelites that, that, that failed. It wasn't God's commandments, his ways, his laws, his holy days. Uh, it wasn't God's ways, his commandments that failed, okay? It was actually the priesthood that failed. And so he promised us the new covenant. And the new covenant actually is, uh, when he returns uh, in, in the millennial kingdom to set up a royal priesthood. Okay, this time, what does it say? If we go into context, it says he's going to place his Holy Spirit uh, within the Israelites, the ones that failed, that first priesthood. That was just a foreshadow anyways. The Lord knew that they were going to fail, but at least he gave them his ways. His ways are perfect. They never were changed. They weren't abolished. And he will renew a new priesthood, me and you, okay? And the Israelites, his beloved bride Israel in the millennial kingdom. This is when the new covenant will be established, okay? So all his ways, his laws, his ordinances, they are in full effect right now. And they will be in full effect in the millennial kingdom with, when Christ reigns with us here on earth. And they will be in full in full action, okay, in full uh, full full throttle, okay. If you want to say in the new heavens and the new earth, okay. So that I just lightly, briefly went over that. I'll be bringing you if you're kind of curious about that. I'm going to be bringing you in my next video, okay. Uh, I'll break it down for you. Actually, in the book of Hebrews, I'll break it down uh, where it says that uh, his commandments uh, became obsolete. Uh, so I'm going to be bringing you details, okay? So so you got to watch my next video, okay? So anyhow, uh, on this video, I, I hope you've been enjoying them. You know, some 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 uh, believers, some brothers and sisters who actually know these things to be true or actually they, they like them, you know, because they know the truth. OK, and then we got some believers out there where, you know, they have disconnected. OK, uh, and we don't we don't uh, condemn anyone, but these videos are to teach, OK, to 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 teach and correct uh, other believers uh, that have disconnected and say that God's laws have been abolished. OK, so without further ado, today we're going to go ahead and do seven dietary laws. And then you must be you might be thinking like this. You might be thinking, but David, you know, it's it's only it's only a, a pig, you know, or David, it's 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 only a catfish. OK, you know, I don't think God's going to. Well, you know what you or you might say, what's the big deal? OK, so I'm going to I'm just going to run you down uh, a, a little example. If you if you think that way. OK, uh, number one, 
God spoke these laws, these rules, okay, these instructions, these dietary laws for a reason. Now, does he have to give us a reason? Does he have to tell us, you know, this is why, uh, you, you know, you, it's okay to question God, but don't doubt what he says. Okay. We know this to be true. So if you say what, that's a no big deal, David, it's just a worm or it's just an ant, you know, because we're going to go into some, some, you can't eat ants and worms. Okay. We're going to be going into those today, but you might be thinking it's not a big deal. Well, Guess what? If God put it as a rule, as in, in, in uh, as a rule for us, as an instruction for us, then don't you think that's a big deal? Just by that itself, okay. So if you doubt God, okay, if you ask Him, does He really have to answer you and say this is why? You know, He says it, so we do it. Obedience, okay. So it is a big deal. It is a big deal because these are instructions by God's mouth. He spoke these things to us. These are his ways. There are dietary laws. There is laws of the land. There are all these laws and, and commandments that he gave us, holy days for a reason, okay? And this is what he measures us by. Very, very important, our obedience to his ways. He wants to see who is who, okay? So just, I plead with you with all my love, like I said in my last video, because I love you, okay? This is why I'm doing this, okay? So anyhow, today we're going to be going ahead and getting into uh, 149 through 155. And I do have an apology for you at the end, okay? I, I feel kind of foolish, but at the end, I do have an apology for you. So stick around to the end, okay? So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into uh, 149 through 155. Uh, let's take a closer look and see for ourselves, is it possible to keep them or too heavy a burden or yoke? And I say, okay, it is possible for us to keep them, right? So uh, let's go ahead and, and check this out. Okay, so remember, I always bring you a scripture before, okay, and after, okay? Like I said, if you barely started to watch these videos, I always have a brief scripture before, and I also have a scripture by King David in Psalm 119. And I do got a fact for you, a fun fact about Psalm 119, okay, that uh, I'm learning, okay? I'm learning. It's just amazing what God's doing in my heart. Uh, it's just It's just been amazing, okay? And so anyhow, I always have a scripture in the beginning from 2 John. Today it's going to be 2 John, uh, chapter 1, 4 through 6, okay? So it says, I rejoiced greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as we were commanded by the Father. And now I ask you, dear lady, not as though I were writing you a new commandment, but the one we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love. You say, yes, love one another. And then he gives you the definition right here, verse 6. And this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment just as you have heard from the beginning, so that you should walk in it, okay? His laws, his statutes, his ordinances, his commandments. The Lord Yeshua came to enforce his father's commandments, okay? And once again, you know, just, just to mention here, and then uh, because, you know, I think of these things and they come into my mind sometimes, uh, but just to let you know, uh, when when uh, the Israelites walked away from his laws, his ways, right? And look what happened. They started picking up the traditions of the pagan nations that surrounded them. We know the story, right? And so as the Lord came, okay, and he enforced, he lived out God's commandments. It is possible. It was his human nature that lived out his father's ways, his commandments, his holy days. Okay, we went through that in previous videos, 
he lived it out, okay? And so did the disciples. So did Paul, okay? And Paul warns us of false doctrines, okay? Doctrines like some, some of them are by John Calvin and others that actually uh, made up false doctrines that these things are no longer or they're obsolete. Uh, Andy Stanley, one of them also. So, you know, just be, he always warned us that these things would creep into the church, okay? So, um, so anyhow, uh, so his commandments, so where was I going with this? Okay, yes, and this is love that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you have heard from the beginning, so that you should walk in it, okay? So we know from the time the Israelites walked away from his ways, his commandments, his feast days, okay, his holy days, okay? They walked away and they sinned, they transgressed his laws, okay, which is sin, okay? That is sin. So today, so he came, Yeshua came, was born, he resurrected, he enforced God's commandments, his laws, he lived them out right in front of us. In other words, to wake us up again, okay? And there were those still following his commandments. We know this, his laws, okay? So it pertained to us as Gentiles as we were grafted in. I'm going to take you to a scripture there. But now, as time has gone on since, since the Lord resurrected, okay, and he sits at the right hand of the Father, he left, of the, he left us the Holy Spirit. As time goes on, we have gone into another disconnect, okay? What do I mean by that? Disconnected from his ways, his laws, his commandments, and he's trying to draw us back, okay, to those when they first came to them, all the... Uh, when the Gentiles were grafted in uh, through the apostles and the, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He's trying to graft us back in to those days as the Gentiles became a uh, part of Israel, okay? And they started following his ways, his laws again. And time, time has passed, uh, 2,000 years, uh, actually a little bit more than that, right? Uh, um, since since uh, Yeshua went to be with the Lord, he resurrected. And we have disconnected once again from his ways his laws okay so this is what he has placed on my heart to actually bring to you to reconnect again okay and so very very important okay so once again i'm going to read second john 1 4 through 6 and then we'll proceed to the next slide okay so it says i rejoiced greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth just as we were commanded by the Father. And now I ask you, dear lady, not as though I were writing you a new commandment, but the one we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you have heard from the beginning, so that you should walk in it all the way from the beginning, okay? His ways, his laws, his holy days have been there from the beginning, remember, it's just a shadow of the reality of the things to come, okay? And they've always been there, okay? So here we go, the next slide. It says, John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. This is Yeshua himself. And always remember, if you were once a Gentile, you have now been grafted into the commonwealth of Israel. Now, you could say, yes, I still am a Gentile. No, you're not. If you're a believer, you have been grafted in to the root, okay, into Israel, into the commonwealth of Israel. You're no longer Gentile, okay? Yes, you still are a different race, if you want to say it like that. We don't become uh a uh, Jewish, like a Jew, you know, we don't become that if you want to look at it that way, as far as a race, okay, you're still going to be the same race, but you have been grafted into Israel. You could say you are Israel now, okay, because we have been grafted in, we've been adopted, okay? So it says, uh, and always remember, if you were once a Gentile, you have now been grafted into the commonwealth of Israel. And so what this means is that all these laws ordinances, statutes, and holy days apply to you 
check it out okay now if you don't understand you might be watching this for the first time then go back okay go back to the videos we went through all the holy days okay very powerful uh, uh word there okay that you go back to the videos where i talk about the the god's holy days god's holy days okay that he established for us okay so anyhow so what this means is that all these laws ordinances statutes and holy days apply to you check it out numbers chapter 15 15 through 16 15 and 16 says the assembly is to have the same statute both for you and for the foreign resident who's the foreign resident talk talked about here this is the gentile this is you and me that were one we were once gentiles we were once foreigners okay uh that, that were grafted in okay it says the assembly is to have the same statute both for you and for the foreign gentile resident it is a permanent okay permanent statute for the generations to come you and the foreigner the gentile shall be the same before the lord okay shall be the same before the lord the same laws and the same ordinances will apply both to you and to the foreigner residing with you okay all the way back in numbers nothing new okay we were always welcome and and as we're grafted in we have to live by the same laws the same rules the same instructions the same dietary laws this is all pertaining to the same set of rules and instructions, okay? His holy days, his dietary laws, his laws, his ordinances, they all pertain to the same thing, okay? So here we go. And once again, <clears throat> this section will pertain to Yahweh's dietary laws. I'm going to read you Deuteronomy 14, 1 through 21, and I apologize. Uh, you can also, please, I, I, I ask you that you read Leviticus uh, chapter 11 all the way through. OK, but I always say, well, read it in the context. So please forgive me that I didn't read you in the context. OK, today we're going to be reading Deuteronomy 14, 1 through 21. But also, I want you to read Leviticus 11. Next time, we'll read all of Leviticus 11. But I really want you to do this, okay? So if, if it's possible, if, you know, the Lord put it on my heart to tell you, uh, please read through these things. They're very important, okay? So Deuteronomy 14, 1 through 21. Clean and unclean food. It says, you are the sons of the Lord your God. You shall not cut yourselves or make any baldness on your foreheads for the dead. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. And the Lord has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. Okay, so once again, we are grafted into this okay if you're not a jew and you're not what and you're, maybe you're a jew maybe you're jewish and you know well you are jewish okay but if if you're anybody but a jew and you're a believer in christ this is huge okay this is very huge because what does it say right here it says and the lord has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth he has chosen us how grateful how what what an honor <clears throat> the god of the universe creator almighty god has chosen us and grafted us in uh, as a special people to be uh, to be set apart right it's it's just a blessing and an honor okay so it says in verse 3 you shall not eat any abomination <clears throat> it goes into excuse me it says you shall not e eat any abomination these are the animals you may eat the ox the sheep the goat the deer the gazelle the roebuck the wild goat the ibex the antelope and the mountain sheep every animal that parts the hoof and has the hoof cloven in two and chews the cud among the animals you may eat yet of those that chew the cud or have the hoof cloven you shall not eat these the camel the hare and the rock badger because they chew the cud but do not part the hoof are unclean for you and the pig okay because it's parts the hoof 
but does not chew the cud is unclean for you. Their flesh you shall not eat, and their carcasses you shall not touch. Of all that are in the waters, you may eat these. Whatever has fins and scales, you may eat. And whatever does not have fins and scales, you shall not eat. It is unclean for you. You may eat all clean birds, but these are the ones that you shall not eat. The eagle, the bearded vulture, the black vulture, the kite, the falcon of any kind, every raven of any kind, the ostrich, the night hawk, the seagull, the hawk of any kind, the little owl and the short-eared owl, the barn owl and the tawny owl, the carrion vulture and the cormorant, the stork, the heron of any kind, the hoopoe and the bat, and all winged insects are unclean for you. They shall not be eaten. All clean winged uh, things you may eat. You shall not eat anything that has died naturally. You may give it to the sojourner who is within your towns, that he may eat it, or you may sell it to a foreigner, for you are a people holy to the Lord your God. Now, it says, you shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. Now, as far as a reason, why? 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 I, don't, I don't ask the Lord why. Okay, I really don't. If he says don't do it, I don't do it. Okay, if it's important for him, well, then it should be important to us because he said so. Okay, because he said so. That's all you need to know because he said so. It says, for you are a people holy to the Lord your God. Okay, so his reasons are perfect. His redemption reason is perfect. His redemption plan is perfect. His ways are perfect. His laws are perfect. Everything that he does is perfect. His creation is perfect, okay? We are the ones that are imperfect, okay? We are the ones that fall short, okay? So, but he's going to restore all things, and it's going to be awesome, okay? It's going to be amazing and awesome. So that is Deuteronomy 14, 1 through 21. Once again, go ahead and read through Leviticus 11. OK, and I'm going to bring you a scripture after this one uh, that proves to you that he's going to come back to judge those who did not want to follow his dietary laws. OK, that found it no big deal. It is a big deal. OK, and we're going to I'm going to take you to that. Script. I took it to I took you to that scripture last time. I'm going to take you there again this time. So in Leviticus 11, okay, this is the chapter I want you to read fully through, uh, 46 through 47. It says, this is the law of the beasts and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth to make a difference between the unclean and the clean and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. Okay, so. Here's that scripture. Is there going to be judgment for those who break his laws, uh, transgresses his laws? OK, yes, there will be uh, even to the point of dietary laws there because he said so. You must follow and be obedient. OK, it says dietary law judgment in the end. OK, in the end, there's a question mark. Yes. In the end, check this out for yourself. Go to Isaiah chapter 66. 15 through 18. When you see these things, your heart will rejoice. You will flourish like a grass. You will flourish like grass. I'm sorry. Everyone will see the Lord's hand of blessing on his servants and his anger against his enemies. See, the Lord is coming with fire and, and, and his swift chariots roar like a whirlwind. He will bring punishment with the fury of his anger and the flaming fire of his hot rebuke. The Lord will punish the world by fire and by his sword. He will judge the earth and many will be killed by him. Verse 17, those who consecrate and purify themselves in a sacred garden with its idol in the center, feasting on pork and rats, and other detestable meats will come to a terrible end, 
says the Lord. Okay, so will there be a judgment according to his laws? Yes, he is the judge. Remember, he is the judge. And these instructions, these laws, these holy days are what he measures it by. Okay, he sits in his courts in the heavens. He judges. Okay, he's going to judge believers. He's going to judge the wicked unbelievers. By his standard. And what are his standards? He left us his standards, okay? All the way from the beginning. His ways, his laws, his ordinances, his holy days, okay? So with that, here we go. And with that, <laughs> and with that, here we go. 149 through 155, okay? 149, to examine the marks in locusts. So as to distinguish the clean from the unclean, Leviticus chapter 11, verse 21. However, you may eat the following kinds of flying insects that walk on all fours. Those, those having jointed legs above their feet for hopping on the ground. 150. Not to eat a worm found in fruit. Leviticus 11, 41. Every creature that moves, crawls along the ground is detestable. It must not be eaten. And the worm crawls along the ground. Go ahead and read all of Leviticus. It gives you a rundown, okay, in detail, okay? So a worm. So just to say, you know, if you're eating an apple and uh, you don't know that you ate a worm, well, how are you going to know that you ate a worm if you already ate it? The Lord knows. Come on, you know. It's like, what if I did eat a worm? Well, if you don't know, then you don't know. You might have. But if you notice a worm and an apple, you know, go ahead and take it out. It'll, it'll remind you now, okay? Now that you know these laws, it reminds you to be obedient. You might say, it's just a worm. It's just a worm, okay? But remember, it is God's law. It's his rule, okay? That's what makes it a big deal, okay? So you might say it's just a worm, but God says, no, do not do that, okay? So that's what makes it a big deal. Remember, we don't doubt his reasons. We just are obedient to them, okay? He knows best, okay? Father knows best, okay? Our Father in heaven knows best, okay? So 151, not to eat of the things that creep upon the earth, Leviticus 11, 41 through 42. It says, every swarming thing that swarms on the ground is detestable. It shall not be eaten. Whatever goes on its belly and whatever goes on all fours or whatever has many feet, any, any swarming thing that swarms on the ground, you shall not eat for they are detestable. 152, not to eat any vermin of the earth. Leviticus 11, uh, verse 44. For I am the Lord your God, okay? For that is his reason. For I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy. For I am holy. You shall not defile yourselves with any swarming thing that crawls on the ground, okay? So if you need a reason, if you do need a reason, okay, here's your reason. He says, for I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am holy. That is his reason. Amen? Okay, so 153. Not to eat things that swarm in the water. Leviticus uh, 11, 43 and 46. Leviticus chapter 11, 43 and verse 46. So it says, you shall not make yourselves detestable with any swarming thing that swarms and you shall not defile yourselves with them and because and become unclean through them this is the law about beast and bird and every living creature that moves through the waters and every creature that swarms on the ground okay so 154 not to eat of winged insects deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 19 and all winged insects are unclean for you. They shall not be eaten. Okay. And last but not least, 155. Remember, we're doing seven in this one. And there'll be seven in the next one. 
in this particular section that we're doing on God's dietary laws. It says 155 says not to eat the flesh of a beast that is torn. Uh, Exodus, you can find this in Exodus 22, verse 31. It says, you shall be consecrated to me. Therefore, you shall not eat any flesh that is torn by beasts in the field. You shall throw it to the dogs, okay? So remember in Numbers 15, 15, and 16, uh, remember we have been grafted in all these sets of rules, ordinances, and laws pertain to us, okay? Because we have become one in Yeshua, okay? One in Yahweh. We've been grafted in, okay? So that was the last of this, this uh, particular video, this episode. Uh, but remember what I told you, okay? I said right here, please, uh, actually, it's the next slide, but I said, please read all of Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14, 1 through 21, as we read it already today, in the full context of our Lord's dietary laws, okay? And <laughs> remember, I told you I had an apology. If you guys didn't catch it, maybe those out there that do really pay attention to these videos uh, must have caught it, okay? And But if you didn't catch it, oh, I put right here, oops, <laughs> oops, I made a mistake in my last video. It says, I apologize. I do apologize no gills, okay? No, it's no scales. Uh, duh, my bad. Laugh out loud, okay? In other words, in my last video, I put gills, okay? Uh, uh, okay, Because one of the, there's a dietary law uh, pertaining to uh, the sea creatures, what we could eat, the fish we could eat, those that we cannot. And so I said, yeah, fishes that don't have gills. And uh, so, so I feel so dumb because the actual slide says scales on it. So, uh, and it does make a big difference, okay? I think every fish has gills, okay? So how's it gonna breathe? <laughs> so anyhow, I apologize, I made a mistake. It's not gills, it's scales, okay? Fish that have no scales are, we are not allowed to eat and bottom feeders too, okay? So here we go. So I thought I'd bring you an apology. Uh, and the video was already done, so I did notice it, uh, but I, I let it go because it was at the end, okay? I wasn't going to, I didn't want to go all the way, but I said I was going to apologize in my next video, okay? So here we go. Now, if you go back and, and you look at the scales, okay? This has scales, okay? This is a fish we could eat, okay? So I'm going to be bringing you a fact, okay? So it says fact. Fishes that don't have scales include the clingfish, the catfish, and the shark family, among others. There's others. Instead of scales, they have other layers of material over their skin. They can have bony plates that are also covered by another layer or tiny teeth-like protrusions covering their skin, okay? So that's a fact, okay? So remember, clean fish, catfish, shark family, among others. Check it out. You got to understand, if the Lord says it, he doesn't want you eating nothing with scales, then check it out and find out which ones, okay? And uh, be obedient. He's watching us, okay? The Holy Spirit resides inside of us, okay? So here we go. I. I, I brought you this slide last time and I'm bringing it to you again because this is where I made the error of saying gills, okay? And uh, so uh, it, here's the fish with no scales. Uh, actually, dolphins uh, actually don't have scales either. Uh, and so, yeah, no dolphins, okay? And so, yeah, here's a, a, a picture of the fish down here. Okay, also says down here at the bottom says, uh, does not have both fins and scales, okay? Uh, all scavenger and predatory birds, uh, and then the fish does not have both fins and scales, okay? So we got crab amongst others that crawl on the bottom, uh, and the dolphin doesn't have scales, okay, and others, okay? So um, these fish over here have both fins and scales. These do not have both fins and scales, okay? These do not have both fins and scales. These do, okay? So these have been sanctified. 
set apart, okay? These are sanctified, set apart, clean, and this is common or profane, not set apart. They they are not holy, okay? They're not set apart. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring you that last scripture by King David. And another fact, okay? What a blessing I found out the, that the beginning letters, these are the Hebrew letters. Uh, today it's going to be Ayin. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Ayin. But if you actually uh, know that the beginning of Psalm 119 starts with the Aleph, and I believe it's the Tov, Tov. Uh, don't mark my words on that once again, but it's the, it's the alphabet. It's the Alpha and the Omega. Okay, these are the letters that Psalm 119 starts with. And they end with the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Uh, just a blessing of a psalm, okay? So all these Hebrew letters, they actually go through the Hebrew letters, and it signifies the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. If you didn't know that, it's just a, a, a fun fact, but also a serious fact, okay? So here we go. King David's own words, okay? And we're going to pray into this. Okay, Psalm 119, 121 through 128. Uh, this is from the BSB version, okay? And you're wondering what the BSB version is. They just completed this Bible. It's called the Berean Study Bible, okay? The Berean Study Bible. They just completed it. It's on sale now. So, um, you know, uh, I, I've been reading it, you know, uh, online. You know, it's, it's actually pretty good, okay? You can check it out for yourself. Uh, this is not a plug or anything like that, but but it's a it's a new Bible they just uh, completed and they printed now and it's available for you. If you want to check it out online for free, you can do that also. Okay, uh, so um, let's go ahead and read this and pray into this. So there's the Hebrew letter right there, Ayin, and so this is uh, dear Heavenly Father. As I come before your holy presence, Lord, I like to pray into this and I say. I have done what is just and right. Do not leave me to my oppressors, Lord. Ensure your servant's well-being. Do not let the arrogant oppress me. My eyes fail looking for your salvation and for your righteous promise. Deal with your servant according to your loving devotion and teach me your statutes. I am your servant. Give me understanding that I may know your testimonies. It is time for the Lord to act, for they have broken your law. Therefore, I love your commandments. They are more, they're more than gold. I love your commandments more than gold, even the purest gold. Therefore, I admire all your precepts, and I hate every false way. And I pray all these things in your name, Yeshua, and we say amen and amen. So I just love these, these psalms. I love this Psalm 119 uh, because it says right here, it says, I am your servant. And, you know, you could pray into this, okay? If you want to understand his statutes, if you want to understand his ordinances, his rules, his instructions, his moed, his moedim, his holy days. If you want to understand all these things, that's all you got to ask him. Ask him to give you understanding of all these things. If you don't know them, and if you're one of those who have disconnected, okay, and the Lord wants you to connect to his ways, this is how he communes with us, okay, especially his Sabbath days, his Shabbat days, okay, so especially all of these ways, all his ordinances, okay, just pray into it. It says right here in verse 125, it says, it says, uh, 124, it says, deal with your servant according to your loving devotion and teach me your statutes, okay? So King David was telling me, teach me your statutes. And you can do the same. You could pray into this and you could ask the Lord, teach me. I want to know your ways, Lord, and, and study, okay? Study and ask him to teach you. And he will. I'm telling you, this is what I prayed for. And he has been bringing me truth after truth, after fact, after fact. And here I am sharing it with you. Am I an expert? No, but I know what he's telling me. I know he's bringing me truth, okay? So it says right here, and verse 125, it says, I am your servant. Give me understanding that I may know your testimonies. Okay, it is time for the Lord to act, for they have broken your law. Remember, he's going to act according to his laws. That's how he's going to measure us. 
believers to the church and to unbelievers, of course. Okay, so this is why we spread the gospel. More than that, we spread his laws, his ordinances, his ways, okay, with others. Share with others his holy days, all these precious things, okay? Says, uh, so amen and amen. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm going to go ahead and sign out, okay? And with that, I say amen and amen. And... Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, come, Bo Yeshua Bo, that means come Lord Jesus, come Yeshua, come, okay, Maranatha, amen and amen, goodbye for now, but never forever.